Tripoli's Alawite community is on edge after an attack on this cafe. They've been targeted before, but not like this, and not by suicide bombers. The neighbourhood where the attackers came from is down there. It's only half a kilometre away. Now, they walked to this busy cafe area on Saturday night. One of the men entered the cafe behind me. He sat down and blew himself up. And then five minutes later, another man stood at the door and detonated his explosives. The local official says he doesn't want any more trouble. We could have restarted the violence in Tripoli by allowing our anger onto the streets. But instead, we decided to put out our hands and allow the army and the state to do its job. The Alawites are a minority religion in Tripoli, and they share the same religion as Syria's President Bashar al-Assad. Most of them support him, and that's the issue. The rest of Tripoli is mainly Sunni Muslim, and they back the other side, Syria's rebels. The war next door has divided this Lebanese city into two opposing sides. And the owner of the cafe says they should put politics behind them. Families from both areas come here to smoke shisha and drink coffee and tea. If they don't come here, my business will close. We can't live and work here without our neighbours. And this is where Tripoli's Sunni Muslims live, in streets just as poor and neglected. Here we meet the family of one of the suicide bombers. They say Bilal al Marian wasn't religious or violent and they don't know why he did it. But another mother with three sons, all in prison, says she knows exactly what's to blame. What is making our young men get to this point to be so violent is poverty, lack of jobs. I swear there are no jobs for our sons and this is the outcome. There's a real sense that Syria's war has reached Tripoli. Still, the army has restored calm but no one is quite sure how long it will last. Nicole Johnston, Al Jazeera, Tripoli.